We're live? We're live. Fantastic. Peace to the saints. As you can see, we have a new setup. So many things we've invested on, invested in rather, particularly for the benefit of the members who support the work, who are true believers, you dig? Those who follow at patreon.com slash the saint and the sinner. We have our sound engineer live today, you dig? Mics, headphones, all that good stuff. We're starting to look like a professional outfit, but at the end of the day, we're here with no gimmicks, just game. A pimp with no limp, you dig? Today's topic is a bit of a continuation of yesterday. Today we entitle it, How to Be a Hard Man, Mentally and Physically. We're talking about mindset. Per usual, we will start off by showing love to those who show love to us. And I hope that you all take note of this for this is how you should conduct your life, knowing that not everyone loves you. Even people who say they love you don't really love you. Okay, they we have Alvaro sent a super chat showing tuition. We have Tajay sent a super sticker. We have Ricardo. He said, I'm having difficulties getting rid of older friendships that I feel are holding me down. Any recommendation? Peace to the saints. It's ironic that you ask that because I often review the videos and there was a video I did previously and the exact same question was asked. Old friendships are linked to habits. You have the habit of reaching out to certain persons. But in reality, if you're actually advancing in life, you'll find that your daily activities, your interests begin to diverge with the persons you grew up with. For those you grew up with, are just a result of circumstance. You were born into a particular family, born into a particular neighborhood, but as you actually develop as a person and you have new skills, new experiences, it's gonna take you apart from those who are slackers in particular because they're not growing, they're not experiencing new things. So the true measure of you is your ability to adapt and improve. And if you're really ambitious, you're going to let go of all things that are holding you back, that are anchors to your progress. So I highly recommend that you get serious about yourself and where you want to be in life. And if you have any thought about your friend not being good for you, I promise you they are not good for you. The great friends that I have, I never doubt. I never have one moment of question. Best friend Ryan Paul lives in Denver. Never had one moment of question of should we be friends? We've, in fact, never had an argument. Jabrizi, I never have a question of, should we be friends? In fact, we've never had an argument. Not to say you can't have disagreement with your friends, but the truth is when you share values with someone and you're both ambitious, you're both good people, you're going to find that the value is obvious and apparent. So if you have to question it, you need to take action. Okay, we have Justin Rashad and Mr. Canvary sent tuition. We have Tommy Bailey. He said, peace to the saints. How do I deal with haters at a workplace? Oh, that's nasty, Saint. You know, the number one challenge is that at the workplace, you can't just remove yourself. Firstly, you always have to estimate what people can actually do. Most haters only actually run their mouth. So you need to estimate what their true potential for hurting you is. Can they get you fired? Are they trying to get you fired? Are they documenting things that you're doing with the superiors? So if you know that these persons are haters, or shall we say enemies, I would advise you to start right now to building up documentation against them, making sure that you're reporting them or doing everything you can to undermine their position and eventually remove them covertly if possible. But if it's already known that you all don't like each other, I would say you must strike first and strike most effectively. But in the presence of them, I would ignore it, try to keep it peaceful, never be alone with them, and make, make sure that you always have the documentation on your side. And also for those in the chat who are misspelling my name, after all of this time, it's extremely disappointing. Perhaps you ought to just watch the stream and enjoy it rather than type things that are incorrect. Okay, we have Romario Dixon sent $20. He said, hey, Mr. Burton, I have a single mother in my life that offers me value, although I don't intend on committing to her and her child. Would you recommend I accept her offerings or move on? Accept her offerings because if you are the great man that I surmise you are, you being in her life and as an extension, <clears throat> being in her child's life are offering them both great value. So, for the time that you're around, it's better than her being without a leader and 
better than her being imbalanced, only having her feminine intuition without any male insight. So I think that you're actually doing a good thing as long as you're not being you know, outright abusive, which I don't trust that that's the case because it seems as though you have good intentions. Okay, we have Yuma World. He said, first stream I've caught in a while. The YouTube grind don't stop. <laughs> peace to the saints. Good to see you again. We have Stunning Hustler said, peace to the saints. Making my presence known. Became a new emperor this month. Looking forward to our one-on-one. -on -one. I gone ahead and contacted you on IG and Patreon. Congratulations on the status. And may everyone commend him for stepping up, doing something new, and positioning himself most importantly uh, so that he can get some expert advice in an area that's important to him. The wisest way to get your consultation book is to email support at marquetism.com. I'm putting that in the chat right now so he can get that email address. We have Kevin sent um, a cash app. He said, countdown to the conference. Plane ticket is secured. Indeed. I'm looking forward to it. And I, fee I think we only have two tickets left. Is that correct, Bridge? Yeah. Wow. We have two tickets left. The uh, tickets are $7.99 each, so um, those might not even last till the end of the day. But there are two tickets left. We're keeping it as exclusive and small as possible, so we will not exceed that amount. Yeah, we had Joshua bought one today, and then we had someone bought two tickets, bought one two for him and one for his friend. We have Ismail sent a cash app. He said, tuition, been missing the lives, but want to show love. And then we have some PayPal's. We have Samson said, peace to the saints and pursuing a career. Is it wise to have a generalist approach or specialize very quickly? Specialize very quickly for no one pays top dollar for those who are average, nor do they pay top dollar for those who cannot do something that others cannot do. So if you're not a specialist, it's highly unlikely you're doing something that's high skilled, which means that you can be easily replaced. And the most dangerous thing in the work environment, if you seek to maintain a job and an income, is to be easily replaceable. So no, you do not want to be a generalist. Consider the fact that most YouTube channels have a particular area of interest. However, base their topic is, you know, they do a particular thing and they try to do it to excellence. Okay, we have Kofi said, I'm currently learning web development, but I'm curious in product-based business, would you emphasize? Do you think it's possible to focus on two things at once, or is it better to say laser focus on one goal piece to the saints? Yes, you can have two foci, especially if those things have some level of relation. There have been times that I was running more than one tech company, which was not terribly hard because I had the employee base and the skill set in myself and as well as my collaborators to do these two things, which are very similar. So it didn't take a lot of startup energy to get onto this next task in a related industry. But whatever you do in life, make sure it's worth the time. You know, don't do anything average and don't do anything that's not exciting to you. Don't do anything where the outcome is not going to make you pleased about the work you put in. Okay, we have Jamie. He sent a cash app. He said, for mental toughness, is it best to work out without music? I believe there's one fellow who's well-known on the internet who talks about either working out without music or uh, working out with music on loop. I think that you always have to think about your outcome. You know, if your priority is tearing the muscles to increase muscular growth, or if your priority is to drive cardiovascular endurance, whether you're using music or not is really irrelevant because that's not core to your chief aim. Do I think that the, by the way, it's not necessary to mention other content creators in the chat. If you notice that I didn't mention them, it's for a reason. So understand when I'm playing chess, don't start playing tic-tac-toe and connect four. And I really want you guys to understand these subtleties because if you're not around sharp people, you're going to become dull. So what I'm saying to you guys is like, keep your eyes and ears open. So if I don't mention the person's name, you don't mention the person's name. You see? This kind of talk that I'm seeing in the chat right now, you guys are the kind of fellows who would have a friend who's being unfaithful to their girlfriend. And when the girlfriend's around, you mentioned the other girl that you weren't supposed to talk about because you're, you're playing hopscotch instead of playing chess. Anyways, now that, okay, Bridget, go ahead and hide, go ahead and time out all three of those folks. 
not little cash kid because he got the point, but time out the other three so they can take out some time to ponder. Thank you. We have Javi said, high level game. Thank you. I received my final graphic designs for my pre-workout. Wow. I'll send it to you for feedback. Consultation helped a lot. Javi, I'm very happy to hear that you're finding success and that the consultation was able to accelerate that for you. I'm really excited for this product and I will be purchasing it as I purchase many of the products that the Saints produce. And we always make sure that they go to quality control, which is a team outside of me before we even put it up on thesassin.com. So multiple persons have to approve that it is indeed a good product. Okay, we have L99 said, peace to the saints. Do you have any advice to a young man dealing with regrets? Live in the present. You cannot click undo in life. And the more time that you dwell on the past, the more you squander your moments today and your opportunities today. So however heinous what you did is in reality, or however heinous you're making it out to be in your mind, it doesn't matter. You must carry on. Carry on. <laughs> Fantastic. And again, saints, know that I don't have any real interest in a bunch of followers just because and, you know, a, a bunch of people in the super chat or excuse me, the live chat. So when I pay attention and I give you advice on things, it's because I want you to be sharper. Like, like do remember that. And I try to example things to you and know that if you're not spending enough time around sharp people, when you are around sharp people, you're going to be in slow-mo. You dig? So what I'm saying to you is if you notice I did not name anyone, then you don't name anyone. It was by intention, by design. Okay, we have Malik said, peace to the saints. What advice would you give to one who wants to begin selling clothing online, t-shirts, hoodies, et cetera? P.S. You're an inspiration. May the most high protect you, brother. I truly appreciate that compliment. Malik, my first piece of advice would be not to do it. I think that the clothing market is extremely saturated and very competitive because it's easy to do. And if you must go into this pursuit, I would suggest that you have a pre-existing following, whether it's online or offline. And thirdly, you must have a very meaningful concept. And fourthly, you should not start with clothing. You should start with a single product in which you can make a meaningful differentiation. For example, Under Armour. And side note, I've had the pleasure of being invited to the Under Armour campus in Baltimore. I've been in their research and development lab, which like literally is like locked down. And they started just doing like quick dry undergarments, you know, the shirt and the underwear. And that's all they did. So I forget if they started with the shirt or if they started with the underwear. I think it was the shirt. But whatever the case is, now today you can buy Under Armour, boxing shoes, basketball shoes, all these different things. But they started with one thing and did it to such excellence that the consumer trusted them to do other things, which is to say that if you want to establish a brand, you must do one thing to such excellence that people, consumers, go to you for that particular item. So I highly recommend you say, I'm going to do this one type of item. I'm going to do it in a remarkable way. And then from there, if you're successful, you move forward. Okay, we have Raz Raz said, peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. And Samson's letting people know, drop a like if you have not already. Peace to the saints. Shout out to Samson Law, moderator extraordinaire. That man is sharp. And shout out to the Saints for really keeping their thinking cap on. I mean, good Lord. And these are some of these guys in the chat kind of guys get you locked up on accident, right? They dry snitching out here. Oh, Lord. Anyways, let's talk about the mental aspects of being a hard man. These are in no particular order, so please forgive me. But let us start by saying that the mindset of a hard man is to accept reality. The reality is that life has many good things, but also life has a promise. And among those good things, life promises that you will have challenge in the form of poor health, loss of wealth, loss of love, and loss of loved ones. When I say poor health, I mean there will be variation in your health. 
whether you've been afflicted by the current variant or you fall ill with something more serious, your health will have fluctuation, even if it doesn't occur until old age. And that's a promise. It's a part of being a human being. But you don't have to be surprised by that because it's coming for all of us. And secondly, you don't have to pout and be weak about it because you can dominate when you can anticipate. So I have warned you, if you didn't already realize, your health will have variation. The health of those around you will have variation. Secondly, loss of wealth. If you have had the privilege of being wealthy, it is also likely you have had the privilege of losing great wealth. No successful entrepreneur has achieved such without taking great risk. And in taking great risk, you put yourself up for the opportunity to have a big payoff. You can only have a big payoff when you also have the other side of the coin, which can be great loss. This will happen to you. And the reality is that you should not fret when it does happen. Knowing that if you're really a hustler and you've actually gained the knowledge and skills of a wealthy man, you can rebuild. And when you really have a hustler's mindset, you enjoy the process as much as you enjoy the outcome. So know that in this life, you will experience fluctuations in wealth. You may experience poverty, homelessness, all of those things of which I am familiar with and have experienced them. They give you great balance when you know how to use those experiences. Okay, we have Karis sent tuition um, via Cash App. We have Stunning Hustler who sent the super chat earlier saying he's the new emperor. I did just email you back, so be on the lookout for that to get you scheduled. We have Steve Rowland sent tuition. We have Tony said, thank you for the mental stimulation and knowledge. Truly a pleasure. Move that out of the way. We have Ramsey said, thank you for continuing to produce vital content. You know what? I thank you for that because so much of YouTube is entertainment. This is edutainment, but primarily education and information. Lastly, you'll have loss of loved ones. I find it strange that people seem to be so distraught when their grandmother or grandfather dies. I love my grandmother and grandfather as much as you do, but clearly they're in old age. They're on their way out. I bet they knew it too. So why is it you become so broken up as though you didn't expect it, as though it snuck up on you? (laughs) Grandma was 100 years old, buddy. She had to go at some point. So what I'm saying is that you can expect health challenges, wealth challenges, loss of love, loss of loved ones. And as a man who accepts reality and expects things to happen in this human life, When those things show up, you should be mentally prepared. You should not fall apart. You should say, ah, I knew this would be here. And you should deal with it like a man. And you'd be a greater man to deal with it with a smile and with pleasantness. Okay, we have L99. This is the second super chat. He said, what are the skills needed for a tech CEO? Well, a CEO of all variety is pretty much the same, which is number one, the ability to inspire people, to get them to work in your ends. When you start a brand new business, often you can't pay people what they're worth. So what you're really compensating them with is your energy and belief and hope that something great will come of your collective labor. So that's number one. Number two is the ability to effectively delegate to people who have skills and to trust them enough to get the job done because you cannot do everything. You can't be the janitor and the web designer and the CTO and the COO and all of that stuff. So a great CEO is a person who majors in the idea that they shouldn't do any work. They should do very little work. They should do meaningful thinking. They're an organizer. Okay, we have Jamie sent another cash app. He said, how do you check coworkers who've gotten too comfy? Uh, Number one, if they've gotten too comfy, it's most likely a result of you and the way you've conducted uh, yourself with them. Or they may just be completely unrefined, which if you're at a low wage job, that's highly likely. And your first question before checking them is that you should check yourself like Ice Cube said, so that if you find yourself around low class people, you should ask yourself, uh, what have I done wrong? And what can I do right to start positioning myself among a higher quality of person? Like, for example, when that fight broke out at the Saint City podcast, I was actually quite surprised because I hadn't spent time among females who actually fist fight 
since my boyhood. So it was quite a surprise to be, you know, back in the midst of this type of female. And fortunately, when the podcast is over, I can send them home. I don't have to live among these people. And unlike a typical nine to five, I don't have to spend eight, nine hours a day around them. But I say, number one, check yourself, because at the, you know, the inclination among us nowadays is to blame others. When really, if we always look in the mirror first, we'll often find better solutions. So generally speaking, I would be thoughtful in dealing with people who are low class because they're dangerous and they have very little to, to lose and they have low emotional intelligence. And number two, if I did check them, I'd probably do it in writing over email in very polite words so that I have a paper trail. So if you need to eventually report them and get them fired, you can do that. Okay, we have Esteban sent ten dollars. He also he's the love bought two conference tickets, one for him and one for his friend. He said the saints that's that's real love to bring a friend into something good because most things that people pass to you know their friends are blunts and right. shots. He said, I'd like to put you on game Marquette training method called functional patterns, HQ in Vegas now. They have similar values and they could help you with your Achilles and get you balling again. Peace to the Saints. Oh bruh, I I stopped playing basketball because I started boxing, but I could, your boy was dunking. Last time I was playing basketball, I could dunk. You heard me? And I, yeah, no, nah, I, your boy can ball. Hey, we have Uncle Mike sent $20. He said, reading the black box now. Thank you for your teachings. Good, sir. Shout out from Oakland, California. Yee. <laughs> Yee. I, I heard that in a minute. <laughs> Yo, peace of the saints in the yay area. You dig. <laughs> Town business. Appreciate He's it. He's reading the best book. Indeed he is. And for those who have not had the pleasure of reading The Black Box, you can get a copy on Amazon. Just type in The Black Box by Marquette Devon Burton. Hey, we have The Great said, how important is living off a scheduled calendar? It is not important at all. But if you're being managed by someone else, like a boss, it could be important. What is more important to me is prioritizing. And so when you have a day, you have things in order generally in order of importance, doing the things that are most important first and doing the things that are most bothersome or challenging first so you can get them out of the way so that it doesn't create anxiety during your day. Hey, we have Connor C. sent $10. He said, peace to the saints, tuition. Peace to the saints. We have Ezekiel said, peace to the saints, Marquette. I appreciate the game. What percentage of women today in the U.S. do you think are worth giving a relationship commitment to? <laughs> a great question a very small amount yes it's a small amount and the amount will vary depending on where you're living for example if you live in miami which is a reflection of much of latin america i would say the percentage is very low because it's a very plastic culture you know most of the women are like the bionic man half their body parts are fake and it's merely a physical representation of their internal world and their mindset which is concerned with things that are phony and shiny and look good on the outside, but there's nothing on the inside. And Miami exists in Las Vegas. It exists in Los Angeles. It exists in many big cities like that. You'll find significant numbers of gold diggers in New York. And often they have bad attitudes and bad accents as well in New York. But once you get outside of these major cities, you find more culture. This is true around the world. Cities are generally breeding grounds for idiotic ideas and the destruction of true culture. And instead, people begin to be washed over with television culture, the culture that comes from social media, idiocy. So when you get to rural places or you get to suburbs, you find higher quality people. So what I would recommend is you find a nice girl who's you know, middle class, maybe lower middle class who grew up in a suburb or a rural setting, she's more likely to have values. And I'd say of the population of the United States, I'd say less than 15% of women are worth uh, committing to. Okay, we have Delravy Vicious said, peace to the saints, move forward like a fearless lunatic. Indeed, let us always remember that. And that's worth hearing every day, especially because we encounter fear every day as human beings. The second piece that I have for you is that the show must go on, which is very much so in line with what the saint shared in terms of go forward like a fearless lunatic. The show must go on is the idea that no matter what happened to you, we must carry on. Sometimes we have this call out mentality. And what I mean by call out is like call out sick, make excuses. And today is it's 
it's extremely evident because you have COVID-19 is the excuse for everything. When you go to a restaurant and they're short on staff, it's COVID-19. Or you go to a party and there's not anyone there and the club owner's like, oh, well, COVID-19 is the reason this place is empty. Oh, okay. I thought it's because you didn't do enough promoting and recruiting. Oh, it's COVID-19. Okay. When you have a show must go on mentality, you will be a valued employee, a pl employee at your job because you are reliable. Your boss knows they can count on you. When you have a show must go on mentality, your spouse will love you more because they know that you will always be there for them because you're always there for you. The show must go on is the idea that no matter what happened that day, we're going to do what we said we were going to do if we're able. And 99.9% .9 of the time, we are able. There was a time I was afflicted with this, uh, this pestilence that has supposedly ravished the land. I was feeling under the weather. And would I have five consultations back to back that day? Back to back. And I still did all five of my consultations back to back. There have been times I had to work through the night. And I was quite sleepy and tired. And I still did my work. There was a time I was training teachers in Philadelphia. And I had been working around the clock, partly doing the teacher training and partly working on my tech startup. And I was dog tired. And I remember I had a break and I went in the bathroom and I laid down on the floor in the bathroom during my break and took a 15 minute nap on the bathroom floor. And then after that, I woke up, walked out of there and got back to work because the show must go on. Well, the first time you were talking about when you were feeling a bit under the weather, I even said we should cancel these. And I've never recommended canceling anything, right. but I've never seen you like that. And you said, no, like I have had my word. That's right. This. We're going to get it in. So the show must go on is what you should always have in your head. And when you carry on like that, you begin to trust yourself in a new way because you know you're always going to find out an avenue through which you can be successful. So really hold on to that idea. And admittedly, um, there were two times I was on runs and, and I didn't feel good when I started the run. And when I got deep into the run, I didn't feel good, but I had said, I'm going to run this number of miles. And so whatever I have to do to get there, I'm going to do it. And I literally had a situation where everything that was inside of my stomach was spilling out. And I had to, you know, like relieve myself in semi in public and take off my shirt to wipe my ass. And I hate to admit it, but it just is what it, what it is. I went too damn hard that day and it was extremely embarrassing. I had to call Bridget to come pick me up. And when she showed up, she said, where's your shirt? I had to wipe my ass with the shirt. Extremely embarrassing. And I'm even embarrassed to share that with you, except that when I was feeling under the weather, when I started the run, I said, I'm still going to run. And when I was running and I started to feel everything breaking down, I kept going. And when she came to pick me up, I didn't meet the goal that I had set out, but I did everything that one could have done to get there. And I felt good about myself. Much better than I would have felt if I would have not left out on that run. Much better than I would have felt if I took, got it three miles in and said, okay, I better go back. I know that I'm always going to go the whole mile. And that's why I think if you're foolish enough to play with me, you're a damn fool because I'm always going to go too far. That's who I really am. I'm going to go too far. So anyone who's playing with my name out there, no matter how small or how big, I want you to know I will come for you. And I'm going to go too far. So don't even start it because that's really who I am. Talk to me. Okay, we have Carl. He said, Marquette, hope everything is fine. I'm running one soon to be successful marketing business. What's three things I will face as a naive 19 year old entrepreneur? <laughs> All is well. One soon to be successful marketing business. Well, I think that marketing is a very challenging space and it's increasingly reliant on influencers. And because of this 
new way of marketing. So it taking on two natures, one nature being influencer heavy, not celebrity, but influencer. And then number two being data heavy, meaning you have to be fairly sophisticated in looking at analytics. Those will be your two challenges is understanding those things and then making the relationships with the people who can help you earn. I think there's nothing wrong with being naive because all of us are naive when we start a new business. The worst thing you can do as a young person in, in a new business is to pretend you know things you don't know. And I can already tell that you have a lot of humility. So I say just approach people who are wise and who can give you advice because they've done it before in your market. Approach them with humility and do your research in advance. And I think you'll be very successful. Okay, we have Pharaoh from the East that Peace to the Saints, tuition for the experience. Peace to the Saints. We have Lawson sent $20. He said, peace to the saints. Mr. Burton, you're looking smooth in that velvet. Hope all is well. We appreciate the knowledge you give freely and out of abundance. Thank you. Appreciate the compliment as well. Okay, we have Ricky Webster. He said, one love, peace to the saints. Props due, Marquette. Peace to the saints. We have Sean Muhammad said, peace to the saints. How can one get their foot in the door with cybersecurity? That's a great question. I think uh, step one is to get some cybersecurity education and getting your foot in the door is easier than you would imagine. I remember when I was working for the mayor of Baltimore in the state of Maryland, there were more jobs available than there were persons to take them. So when you're in a field like uh, software architecture, enterprise engineers, these kind of folks, you have the advantage, not the employer, because there are fewer of you than there are jobs. So it's not about getting your foot in the door. It's about getting the skills. Okay, we have Daniel. He sent tuition from Mexico. Peace to the saints. Is that Daniel that ordered the bag? I'm not sure. Okay. Okay, we have a plus MVP. This is a, you can say it. Oh, Bowler alert. Yeah. Okay. He said, one of my girls left me for a man in his late 40s, early 50s yesterday. Wow. At first, I was taken aback as this is the first time I experienced in this sort of thing, but quickly realized this is a great lesson. A man can still do his thing late in life. Peace to the saints. Oh, true indeed. <laughs> you know, it's a unique experience to get knocked for one of your broads, but he probably did you a favor because at the end of the day, she wasn't sure female now was she? So he just took a disloyal little thing off of your hand. So you might even send him a thank you note. And then we have Ricardo in the chat message, Sean Muhammad saying he works in cybersecurity. So this is how people can connect and really grow their Absolutely. own personal brand. Yeah. And one of the great things about guys like Ricardo who are experienced and successful that's why we have people come to the conference so you can meet these folks and build relationships and grow together and get insights. And also, you know, Joshua just uh, got his conference ticket. He actually lives here in St. City and he's also in the tech field. And it's always great to get these minds together because one thing I know from for certain having built many businesses is that relationships are the beginning and the ending of success, meaning that you can't build a business without having multiple persons. It takes teamwork to make the dream work. And you can't even get investment without people liking you. You have the greatest business idea in the world and you can be highly skilled. But if people don't like you and they don't know you, it won't work. Okay, we have Sean Muhammad. He came back with another super chat. He said, I apologize. I didn't state the question right. How can I get these skills? I'm not sure where to start. Understood. It depends on your locality. There are some localities where there are institutions of learning, even like the likes of private colleges like DeVry. I'm not recommending this one in particular, but I'm saying these types of colleges where you can go in in person and take cybersecurity courses for a certificate, even at local community colleges. Um, so, and you can also take online courses, but I highly recommend you do something in person, meaning you walk into the classroom. And also I would do some research in your locality and find out if that's a great place for cybersecurity. So if you're in Iowa and you want to stay in Iowa, that might not match up very well. But cybersecurity is very much so centered around the East Coast, particularly in the Washington, D.C. area, because it's a lot of government stuff, Virginia, Maryland, these states. And so I would probably start trying to get into government and then I would probably branch out into private industry. And that's going to provide you a unique opportunity to be technical and also be a liaison between these two um 
entities, if you will. Okay, we have Fooly Cooly. He said, the show must go on, go on analogy is legit. The doctor I work with gave me a hard time because I didn't do my 1.5 mile in 10 minutes. I hit 11, still gave me crap. Hmm. 1.5 mile in 10 minutes. Wow. That's pretty fast. Yeah. That's pretty that's fast. Thinking. Yeah, that's very fast. Okay, we have Adrian. He said, tuition, peace of the saints. Peace of the saints. We have Kevin K. He said, greeting saint. You preach to avoid the poor and ugly. I understand <laughs> avoiding the impoverished, but could you elaborate on why you should avoid the ugly? That's a great question. Uh, the ugly are very dangerous for a couple different reasons. Let me tell you a story that a young lady recently told me. And of course, this is more problematic among females, but there are three young ladies, all of whom were very good friends with one another. They went out to a pool party here in Las Vegas, and two of the young ladies were talking to two gentlemen. And the third young lady wasn't in the pool. She was hanging out outside of the pool. She didn't want to get her hair wet. You can tell she's African-American, right? So eventually, one of the guys who was with those two girls starts eyeballing the girl who's not even in the pool and even makes a remark about how good looking she is. And she was a lot more good looking than the first two girls that they were supposed to be paying attention to. These three girls all being friends, the ugly ones, and I hate to use this term because it's negative, but the ugly ones essentially abandoned the good looking girl, didn't want to be friends with her, even though she did not drive any infidelity or any misbehavior. They not only stopped being friends with her, but started trying to sabotage her and talk behind her back and spread gossip about her, which is to say, when you're dealing with someone who is ugly, whether it's in a literal sense of unattractive or they have an ugly attitude or an ugly mindset or they engage in ugly behaviors, drinking, smoking, things like this. These are the folks who tend to be jealous of you. They want to pull you down because they see you shining and they feel like your shine is at their detriment. You see, whereas if these were all three good looking persons, and when I say good looking, meaning attractive, they have attractive qualities, whether it's attractive personality, you know, they're well spoken, they're well dressed, whatever the case is. If they were dealing with someone and that person was interested in their friend or complimented their friend, even without being interested, they wouldn't be so broken up about it because they're used to getting good things. They're used to getting compliments. They're used to being in the center of attention sometimes. And so they don't mind stepping aside to let someone else enjoy some shine. But when you never get the compliment, you never get to get the shine, you become envious and hateful. And that's why you want to stay away from these persons who are not on your level because they want, they'll want to tear you down to where they are. chat we have cody crockett said thank you for the big game marquette let's get the likes up peace to the saints peace to the saints indeed let's go ahead and hit that uh like button we have nikita said industrial or elect electrical engineering or computer science which major is better those are all three great fields that'll pay very well if it were me i would personally take uh computer science and Hopefully you have an opportunity to have an emphasis in a meaningful programming language or some software development, but those are all three great. I personally would favor computer science. It's a little more interesting. You're more likely to deal with consumer products and it's easier to transition into being an entrepreneur. Okay. We have blue thoughts said finishing my bachelor's in virtual reality. Any advice to break into that field? Blessings to the saints. Oh, VR is a great opportunity. And if I were you, I'd be on websites like AngelList checking for startups that are looking to hire someone in the VR space, whether it's on the engineering side or otherwise. Now, VR is cutting edge, augmented reality. All of these things that help with escapism are really cutting edge. You know, metaverse type experiences, whether it's on the gaming side or work productivity side. So I would get into a startup and carry on from there. But these jobs are listed on Indeed. I mean, VR, if that's what you've actually studied, I think that should be quite easy to um, get started. I don't, I don't know what you mean by break in. I don't think there are many barriers. Uh, the sad reality is that anytime you get a job, it's less because of your skill and competence and it's more because of your relationships. So you have the skills that gets you in the door, that gets you a conversation, but what actually gets you a job is people being familiar with who you are. So I would go to VR meetups, meetup.com usually lists things like this. 
And I would also try to join a startup, even if I had to operate for low pay, just to get around the industry and meet some players in it. Okay, we have a plus MVP. He's the one that had the ball alert already. He said another super chat. He said, so? I told him good luck and I hope she earns for you like she did for me. Ooh. The old man goes by a nickname with gray hair on his face. Mm. Hey, and you know, I like your attitude as well because you know, you kept it player, which is to say, you know, the name of the game, you know, she chose old boy, and, you know, let her get her walking papers. And that's the way it's supposed to be because in life, I, as I say, you know, you might lose some money, you might lose a female. That's a great thing to lose because you didn't lose a limb and you didn't lose a loved one. So uh, you can replace a female as well as a dollar. Okay. We have fully Cooley. He said also Ricardo, you see, Institute.com money back guarantee if you don't pass the exam for comp TIA security plus. Bingo. And that's the beauty of having a community. And especially when you have specialists that can give you the specific thing to do. And more importantly, let us all come in fully coolly because he spent money to help someone else. And that's his second super chat. Yes. Yeah. That, that really shows his saintly nature. Like he wanted to stand up and do a good thing for another person. That's not something you see every day in the society. For Christ's sake, you can barely drive in the car without someone cutting you off in a rush to get somewhere that they don't even want to be. They're rushing to a job they hate, yet they would cut you off. It's outrageous. Right. We have Agent Fit said, peace to the saints. Hey, this is Kaizen Graphics on IG. And I was wondering if I could get another chance at working to be your thumbnail designer. Um, I do recall your message on Instagram, which I read personally, and I offered you an opportunity in that moment. I tend to have a sense of urgency and my experience in business is that deals get closed when there's a sense of urgency, excitement on both sides of the deal. And me believing in this community, I always, if I can offer the opportunity to people who are within this community. You may know that there are many people who do it for free. I offered to do a deal at the rate that you offered. And I said, okay, let's get started and let's get this done. I remember when I was a young man, ambitious in business, I was hungry to get a sale and to get a dollar. If someone offered me a sale, I'm going to get to work on it right now. And I'm going to try to over deliver, deliver it better than expected, deliver it earlier than expected. I don't know if you're working with uh, people overseas. I can only assume that you are. And as much as the timing that you suggested was not quite reflective of the business hours in the West. But at the end of the day, I'm not interested, but I do appreciate the opportunity. And also, um, I don't know why everyone's always writing in all caps. <laughs> like um, The English language uh, predates all of us. And so we want to respect it because it's standardized for understanding and clarity. So I don't know if English is your first language, but for those of you in which English is your first language, if you would try to respect the rules of English grammar and writing, it would help all of us. And I just want to make a side note that, you know, anytime you go to a developed nation, generally they're developed because of two things, language and standards, meaning language, everyone speaks the same language and it's been taught at a regular, in a, in a standardized way. And the second thing is standards, meaning the standard and expectation in life and of conduct is high. What I mean is often when you go to countries in sub-Saharan Africa, they might have two declared official languages. Like, oh, we have Swahili as an official language and we have English as an official language. Yeah, it's all beautiful to respect your culture and your roots, but that does not help the development of your nation when you have multiple languages and no one's mastered any of them. And America is clearly in decline because now we don't know what our official language is. And so few of us have mastered English and the African-American is a great example of that. It is quite a pity that you should be in a country for 400 years and you speak English as though it's your third language uh, is quite annoying and it's very disadvantageous in the marketplace. And I say that with full love. Okay, we have, you can say what this is right here. It's delayed there. Okay, it's a baller alert, $100. <laughs> baller alert. Uh, that is the high for the day. Yeah. You just sound better when you say it. So, all right. We have it's Maseo. He said, paying tuition. I've been soaking up too much game, free game from you. Just showing some appreciation. Peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. I really do appreciate you stepping forward because you don't have to. And, you know, there's more people watching right now than have clicked the like button. 
And so for you to send in tuition is a real statement on the kind of man you are. So thank you very much. And for those who have clicked the like button, which takes no effort and costs you zero dollars, I appreciate you taking that easy step to support. It does mean a lot. Okay, we have Sean Muhammad. I think this is his third super chat. He in. said, the podcast with the girls is cool, but these streams have the real high game. More of these, please. I think it was supposed to be high IQ game. Yeah. Yes. You know, Sean, there's really a, a fine balance that we must strike, which is number one, being that we're building a global movement, we must have, must have reach. So we have to get the message out to the people. And the idea is that they come in for the candy, meaning things that uh, initially appeal, the entertainment, the laughs, the drama, Jerry, Jerry. And then when they subscribe to the channel, every now and then a video like this pops up and then they get some real pure game, which they wouldn't have searched for. They wouldn't have clicked it if it, you know, because the thumbnails on these ones are not like exciting. And so we're balancing those two things. And one opportunity that we're working on right now is bringing in professors, academics, scholars to have some real serious conversations. And so we will continue with these two things in parallel. And of course, the members at patreon.com slash the saint in the center and all of the member websites, they get the real pure unadulterated game with no interruptions, things like that. So, you know, we are working hard and um, we will get it done. And I appreciate all of those who step up to support because we do invest a lot of resources into this and we are in, in the red, shall we say. Um, I think we spent $15,000 in the last month and a half just between displays and audio equipment and uh, video stuff and headsets, sound boards, uh, engineering hours. And we do time finding the females too. Like we spend, they don't just, I mean, we spend time. Yes. And so I hope that uh, people appreciate that. And I know there are many who do. And so I do want to thank you all. Okay, we have Ty said, an old homie of mine's was throwing indirect shots at me through social media instead of addressing me directly. How should I handle him? Well, if he's just a big mouth bitch, um, just let him carry on. You know, if that's all he really is about, let him do what he do. Because real friends don't throw shots. I mean, even, you know, yesterday I'd like made a tease of a, someone I respect. And I even regretted it, even just teasing with no malicious intent. So real friends don't do things like that. And if they do, they would probably present themselves and apologize. So if he's just a big mouth broad, I'd probably ignore it if it's not doing any damage to your reputation, et cetera. Okay, we have Dan said, what is your take on psychotherapy, like dream analysis and general therapy? I've been dabbling in Jungian books. Jungian, Jungian. books, referring to Carl Jung. Psychotherapy may work, but the thing that is often left out is that whoever engages in the process should be of very high IQ. And if it's someone outside of yourself engaging you in that process, they should have superior IQ to you or else they wouldn't really be able to analyze your mind and thoughts or influence your mind and thinking or drive your thinking. A dream analysis, I think, is at some level meaningful and at another level, not meaningful because uh, some of the research says that dreams are not meaningful on a scientific level, but we all know that we've had experiences and it's come out in our dreams. So it does have some relevance and general therapy. It depends on what you're getting therapy for. Sometimes you don't need therapy. Sometimes you just need to stop being a bitch. And then other times you do. Other times you've experienced deep trauma and you need someone to help you unpack that. Okay, we have Micah sent $5 on Cash App. He said, any advice for an inspiring photographer? Ooh, that's another tough field. Um, just a side note, if you're pursuing photography, uh, music, and fashion, those are highly competitive fields in which you should have a real significant amount of creativity and differentiation to stand out. And you may have some initial years of struggle. If you really feel called to do it, carry on. But mostly I would avoid it if you're just trying to make a buck. Uh, for photography, I think that, number one, if you're trying to make a buck to start with, you really should think about what type of photography are you focusing on? Is it boudoir? Is it wedding photography? Is it photography for aspiring social media stars? 
So that'd be the first thing is to create a specialty and to create a particular aesthetic so that all of your stuff looks a particular way. Kind of like Andy Warhol was like the first capitalist artist. You know, he depicted brands like Campbell's Soup. He was kind of the first guy to do that. And Upwork's a good place to start getting clients. Yes. Good, good point. Okay. We have L99. I believe this is his third super chat. He said, how to deal with a co-founder and CTO who barely responds to my messages. I would be pleased that you're in the early stage of your business and I would start making plans to pull them out of the business and switch someone else in or to take the code and start with someone who's more serious about being successful. The challenge is when you're not the technical co-founder, you haven't written the code and you don't know how well that code is commented. So my hope for you is that you have it updated in a repository and they're doing code pushes on a daily basis and they're commenting that code very well so that someone else can pick up and carry on. Okay, we have Hydra said, as a young man, should I entertain a serious relationship with a woman? I'm 21, slept with 30 plus women and find myself bored of meaningless hookups. Congratulations on becoming bored at this young age. It usually takes a lot longer than that. But I guess you grew up in a different era than I did. I don't think I'd caught that many bodies by age 21. That's a lot of bodies. This young man has been busy. Um, that's quite significant. Yeah, because I remember when I was in high school, chicks used to wear clothes. And nowadays, um, they don't. You know, in full disclosure, I was on Instagram recruiting chicks for the show. And I had messaged a girl who was in high school. And Bridget said, hey, Marquette, stop messaging these girls because you messaged a girl that's in high school. What? That's impossible. I'm messaging girls who look like straight sluts. And then sure enough, she was in high school. I was like, wow. Like I remember when I was in high school, girls used to wear clothes, uh, which is to say that you've probably had an accelerated experiences experience saying right? now that you've reached boredom with these meaningless hookups, you're basically experiencing what males start to come to in their late 20s which is the feeling. And I think it's also biological as well because their actual libido has started to slow down, which you want someone who's familiar, someone you trust. You don't mind going to sleep next to. And that's a good thing. So yes, you should entertain a serious relationship. We have Malik Love. He said, what advice would you give to a person like me who is 26 years old with a wife and a child? I have no college degree. And because I'm six foot seven, 280 pounds, I can only get security jobs. Could I get into IT with no degree? Well, IT is a broad field. So when you say information technology, that's like saying, can I get into sports? Yeah, you could, but are we talking about being a horse race jockey, a golfer, a boxer, a basketball player? So yes, information technology, the technology field, yes, you can get into that without a college degree. You can have a certificate and get to get into it. You could have no paper at all. You could have just tremendous skill. Often in the technology field, you might be surprised, but if you can get the job done, they'll hire you. In fact, there are performance tasks, meaning coding quizzes or reading lines of code or debugging something during the interview. And if you can do it, you're hired. But number one, I would say that this is my first suggestion to you. If you're 6'7", 280, that's a beautiful thing. And congratulations on having a wife and a child. Um, you should also look at being a bodyguard because bodyguards get a lot of money. And at 6'7", 280, you're not going to have to actually do anything. Um, do you recall what the rate on, on bodyguards are? I, I want to say the last time I was looking to hire a bodyguard because I, I was you know, wearing a lot of jewels and had a lot of cash on me. So I figured it'd be the best thing. Save somebody else's life really more than mine. Um, I want to say that for a uh, five to eight hours of having a bodyguard, it was going to be like 1200 bucks. Yeah. And it was expensive in foreign countries as well, like third yeah. world countries. Yeah, so I would also consider looking into being a bodyguard, which is something you can do just by standing around. So that's number one. And then number two, yes, you can get into the IT industry. I would start narrowing it, thinking about what skills you currently have and what skills you're willing to get. Like, so for example, me, I wouldn't try to get into coding because my experience with it, I find it to be very tedious and I don't enjoy it, particularly the debugging aspect. Okay, we 
have Agent Fit. He's the one that was talking about the thumbnails earlier. He said, it's all good. It's my fault. I wasn't prepared. I had no clue you would respond. And I was at work at the moment. Peace to the Saints, 100K soon. I appreciate that. And you know what? I've been in that exact situation of being underprepared. I've done that before. And that's a good thing is that you you learn and you get better opportunities. Okay, someone did say bodyguard eight hours, 1500. Right. Okay, we have RG said, peace of the saints. Do you have any advice for young men in their early 20s? Minimize your vices. Use condoms. Don't consume alcohol. And pick a goal. Stay focused on the goal. Okay, we have Darius said, thank you for sharing your wisdom. Peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. We have Tony Parker said, is digital marketing or copywriting worth learning? Not to me. Okay. We have Adrian. He said, I'm looking to travel this year. It'll be my first time traveling solo. I'm thinking Mexico. Any advice or places you would recommend to visit? Peace to the Saints. If it's your first time traveling solo and perhaps your first time traveling out of the country, you might warm up with a place like Puerto Rico, which is essentially Latin America. However, it is an American territory, so you don't need a foreign passport. And there's reliability of public services. And we know that the police are not corrupt. Not saying that Mexican police are corrupt. It just depends on where you are. If you're in Tijuana or Juarez, they're more likely to be corrupt. If you're in La Ciudad, they're less likely to be corrupt. If you're in Tulum, they're more likely to be reliable. If you're in Cancun, who knows what you get, but things are very expensive. So it depends on what you're looking to get out of the experience. But um, Mexico's cool if you go as a tourist. I would recommend that you probably go to Tulum. It's exciting right now. And, you know, chicks are going to want to hear about your experience there. And you'll meet a lot of Mexican and foreign chicks there. And you'll have a good time, young men like yourself. Okay, we have Antonio sent a PayPal. He said, Saint, when meeting new and higher quality people who may lack an irrelevant, trivial thing, such as guitar skill in my case, what approach should one take if one wants to build that relationship? I feel like hyping them up is inauthentic, but it's what most do from my experience. I, for the most part, stuck to complimenting them on the things they do right. Is this best? Honesty is always a good start, especially if you're dealing with intelligent people, because you can't fool them. <laughs> you can trick dimwits with insincere uh, compliments, but listening is a major way of endearing yourself to people. So I would listen, number one, and then number two, offer sincere service, doing things that either they don't want to do or things that they can't do or giving them, helping them with things they didn't know they needed. You know, for example, Bridget is always helping me with things that are meaningful, but I didn't realize. Like the camera that you're looking at me through is a high quality 4K camera, but and oh, Bridge, I probably forgot to change the setting on there to use a 4K on the StreamYard. But anyways, I didn't know I needed that. You know, she just gave it to me as a gift. And once I started using it, I was like, whoa, I should have been doing this all along. I wasn't going to do it for myself, but she did it for me, which makes her more valuable because I know that if I have her around me, I have a constant source of someone who can see things I don't see. And so adding value will always put you in position. It will make you what is called a linchpin. Hey, we have Sean Muhammad. I lost count. He just keeps sending in the super chats. He said, Saint, have you ever been to Pakistan? You know, I've not been to Pakistan. I actually have a good friend in Pakistan, married woman, and she did give me an invite and I, I'd like to go. Seems like an interesting place. Okay. We have Charles. He said, just tuition, peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. I wonder, is that Charles from the last conference? I don't recognize the name, so I don't think mm. so. I've it's seen not the Charles before. you're thinking of though. Oh, it's not. No. Okay. Okay, we have Jonathan Diego. He sent a super sticker. Peace of the Saints. We have Neil Fani. He said, looking smooth in that velvet big dog, and I trust all is well with you. How's your week been so far? Peace and blessings to you as well as Assassin. All is well. The week has been very busy, but rich with good things. My exercise has not been at the level that I would like because I've been so busy. So I'd like to improve that and improve my ability to get straight to it uh, out of bed. But in terms of productivity and doing new things and taking risk and being around good people, it's been excellent. So I've been very happy. And for me, happiness is the greatest measure 
And it's what we're always trying to pursue, whether we pursue our happiness through women or we pursue our happiness through money or pursue our happiness through carnal satisfaction or through fancy items. So I've been happy and that's really important. Okay, we have Jaron Johnson sent a PayPal. He said, for the ones too weak to hit the like button, peace to the saints. <laughs> peace to the saints, you dig. And I believe he's in Canada planning on coming to the conference. Looking forward to it. We have a lot of Canadians coming out this yeah, time. Yeah, and some from Sweden as well. Yes, peace to the saints around the world, especially in Sweden. The boys in Sweden are real ones. Yeah. We have Malik send another super chat. He's a six foot seven guy that you recommended being a bodyguard. Mm -hmm. He said, I work as a correctional officer. I got tired of throwing hands with inmates. So thank you for the advice. And by the way, when I said IT, I should have said something like cybersecurity, peace to the saints, tuition. Thank you. Yeah, throwing hands with inmates is not fun. And to be honest with you, being around that kind of energy is not going to inspire you and you're almost guaranteed not to meet anyone inside the correctional facility who's going to help you get to the next level or to share a brilliant idea you know there's certain places that are devoid of the good energy and opportunity that you would want places like hospitals it's a place for the sick or places like prisons place for the mentally ill or the incompetent or the emotionally underdeveloped you see, I like to try to stay around prosperity and beauty and wealth. That's really what you should be aiming for. And you might be saying, Mark, well, someone has to work in the hospital. Someone has to work in the prison. Yes, yeah, someone does, but not you. <laughs> and uh, the same is true when you want to be a movie star. And people say, you can't do that. Well, someone has to be a movie star. How about you? So I'm never here to discourage anyone. I'm always here to point out the reality. And if we can help you route to that outcome, but always put your seed in fertile soil. And I don't think a, a box, a cement steel box with grown men trapped inside of it is a comfortable place to be emotionally or physically. Okay, we have. But it pays well. And I, and I don't hate anybody earning, especially when you have a wife and a child. So I, I do want to throw that out there. Okay, we have Ty said, what are some steps to forgive myself for dirt I've done in the past and live happy in the present? <sighs> Uh, step one, I got a book recommendation for you, which is actually, I'm not going to give you a book recommendation. I'm going to tell you to read a whole book because that's just going to send you into thinking. Your biggest issue right now is thinking. You have to get control of your mind. You see, the things you've done in the past don't exist in the present for the most part. It's your thoughts that get you carried away. So I'd recommend that you start your day doing the following. You wake up, you have a protein drink or whatever you have that's light enough so that you can go exercise immediately. Following your exercise, go ahead and clean up, shower. And then I would get straight into meditation, which is not prayer. Meditation is different than prayer. Prayer might be asking God or higher power for strength. Meditation is asking yourself for strength and it's focused thought and it's time in silence. And I would use that to identify your goal and what you want out of life and the more you become goal obsessed, the more you forget about the things unrelated to your goal. And you also want to focus on the fact that you are deserving. You deserve great things. And the more you can have self-love, the less you will have self-loathing and self-hate for some of the dirt you've done in the past. Okay. We have Lag Mystic sent tuition. We have Eric. He said, do you have any tips on how I can impress my girlfriend's wealthy relatives? I will likely be the only black person and I want to be held in high regard. I'm having dinner with them tonight. Peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. I'm glad you've asked me this question because this is a question that many of us ambitious young people come across many upstarts. They might call it. You wonder how to conduct yourself in this new environment, whether it's just because you're, not well off and everyone else is or it's that you look different in your case you're black they may be asian or white or what have you the number one thing is to be authentic because everyone can sense and sniff out that which is not authentic number two is to be relaxed and have fun when you're relaxed other people are relaxed and also to realize that those who are wealthy are not as different from you as you think especially if you are as intelligent as i surmise you are you see, the qualities that have gotten you in position to be at this dinner are the same qualities they possess. 
So in as much as you must, you are probably intellectually developed, oh, they are too, and you'll find commonality there. And the more you excel, you'll find that the differences of your skin color are not as relevant as the differences that you'll find in intellect and class and personality. So what I'm saying to you is this. You're a smart young man. Have faith in that. Go in there, relaxed, enjoy yourself, have fun, crack jokes, be a keen listener, and uh, know that you're good enough. That's your number one challenge is not feeling good enough, whether it's because of your income level or your skin color. And I can promise you that even white people, even Jewish people, even wealthy white Jewish people don't feel good enough. It's a human thing. So have fun. And um, if you know it's going to be a formal sit down dinner, you might take a quick review of a, a video on dining etiquette so that you're familiar with the proper utensils to use at a given moment. But generally, you start outside and work your way in closer to the plate. Okay, we have Justin. He's intuition. He said, peace to the saints. We have G said, how do I get out of my own head? (laughs) That's a good question, Saint. Uh, Per what I said to the previous Saint is thinking can often be the enemy. Me, I think people respect me for my ability to think, but I'm often trying not to think. Uh, My morning meditation, I like to use to do all of my thinking for that day. You should really emphasize on action. And what I do to get my mind under control when it's out of control is writing. I write down what my goal is. I write down what my immediate next step is. The challenge is sometimes we allow the mind to become overwhelmed. The reason you become paralyzed and you stop taking action is because you want to achieve this big goal. So you're thinking about all of the things you have to do to achieve this big goal. When in reality, you should only think about the one next step you have to do. Your mind can handle that. Your mind cannot handle the next 30 steps. Thinking about all of them at once, you overwhelm the mind. The mind is a tool just like a screwdriver or a flathead or a hammer. You can't use a hammer to do a screwdriver's job. Each tool has a limit. Your brain has a limit of what it can handle at once. And for that, you should allow it to handle just the immediate next step at once. Okay. We have, sorry, I had to take care of something. We have Shah Muhammad back again. He said, if you ever decide to go, let me know. My fam is real connected out there and would love to show you the hospitality. Oh. SubhanAllah. I really appreciate that, Sean. And absolutely, when I go to a country, I always want a local guide. There's a hater message I wanted to read. I deleted out. it. Sorry. Oh, okay. oh, you're quick. Yeah. Did you block them as well? I blocked it. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> they have nothing better to do but sit here and hate on YouTube. Quality person. Right, right, right. And the thing that cracks me up is that um, when people hate on me, they never have a real name. They never have a profile photo. So if you hate on Marquette de Von Burden, I would politely request that you have your full legal name and you have a photograph of your face and you'd be willing to share your Instagram so we can measure you up and measure up the big homie and see who's standing tall. That's all I ask. Little Cash Kid said at the person, prepare for your execution and then said, oh, you lucky bridge deleted that. <laughs> yeah, see, these folks are goofy. And it's also the it's, person follows a loser because he used a term that that loser uses. I see. Yeah. Not surprising. Yeah. Okay. We have Mahad said, Peace to the saints, tuition for the big mission. As per my people tradition, I wrote this little poem about your presence here on YouTube. I put it in my next, I think that says super chat. Yes. Okay. We have Sire said, Hello, I'm 17 and have been watching for a year. This is my first tuition. You have. Give me more game than I would ever been able to acquire from any male figure in my life. Truly appreciate you, my brother. Yeah, thank you, sir. I re- that means so much to me. And Bridget knows how much um, men mean to me, especially young men, and especially young men who are seeking something. Yep. You see? I'll go ahead. We have Hydra said, do you think women who get BBLs are mentally ill? <laughs> I don't think because they get the BBL, we can be certain that they're mentally ill. They're suffering from an affliction that ails most women, which is to follow the follower. One woman does it, the other one does it. 
That's why you find that women so uniformly accept the concept of makeup and high heels, even though both of them are ludicrous. How silly is it to stand on stilts all day knowing that it's uncomfortable and bad for your physical health? It's complete idiocy. Um, but they play follow the follower, which is to say that they're not ill, they're female. And the problem is that these females are not being led by men who say, I do not accept you standing on stilts. You look foolish. Don't tell them in that way. They don't accept that very well. But who set the standard and say that this is not the right way. You do not need to put false nails on top of real nails. You don't need to stand on stilts. That is the problem. Much of what we see lacking in the female is merely a result of what has been lacking in the male leadership. Okay, we have Ezekiel. He said, how do you get a solid main girl on board with having relations with other girls? Do you think it's best to be honest up front? Thoughts? Women are not operating from a place of rationality. Consider the fact that if you've been a student of the Saint City podcast, and that's one of the great values in seeing me and Jabrizi, or I should say Jabrizi and I conduct this is because you get to see people talk to women who are good at it. And you also get to see sharp individuals point out the logic or lack thereof in real time. It's called metacognition. We're thinking about thinking. So sometimes you'll hear a woman say something in those videos, and then you'll hear me say, wait, wait, you said the exact opposite. Or you'll hear a woman say something and then I'll reply and then she'll say, oh, I agree with you 100%. And you're like, you don't agree with him. You just said something in complete contradiction. Well, now all of a sudden she agrees, which is to say that they're not operating on logic. They don't think in linear ways and they're easily influenced. That being the case, to approach them with logic and linear thinking is not going to get you anywhere for the most part. So mostly you have to do what you're going to do and then patch it up on the back end. And that actually works better for them. And further being that they're emotional, not rational beings, you have to be able to leverage emotion and they don't have significant emotion for you until they're attached to you. So at that point, then you have a better chance of setting up things as you wish them to be. And most importantly, you'll always be most successful in setting up this dynamic when you're in the proper community wherein this behavior is spoken well of and she can see it um, operating outside of her. Because as I said, women are basically just doing what every other woman does. So you have to make sure that you're in a community where other women are doing the right thing or are open to certain things. Okay, we have Heels and Organics and a cash app. Pizza the same. It's very consistent. Okay, we have a super chat from... Ava, he said, thank you for helping me open my eyes through your video, specifically being special, comes from consistent, smart actions to your goals. Expect hard work and setbacks. Yes. Okay, we have Mahad. I think this is his poem that he wrote. He said, you are a powerful but yet gracious tornado that stirs the masses to their core. Whether they like it or not, they will be moved. Mm, that's clever. I like that. Yeah. yeah we'll have to see if we can save that one. We have Daniel's back with another super chat. He said, I appreciate you, Marquette. Shout out to my brother and true friend, Sergio, for putting me on the assassin. I'll be paying tuition consistently. Peace to the saints. And, you know, shout out to Daniel as well as Sergio, because not often enough do we share good things with people we love. And that's one of the examples we need to give to the world, which is to live in the present, appreciate people while they're here. And try to do things as though it's the last time you'll ever do it when you can, right? Which is actually more often than you think. Now, think about how you would do something if it, was, if it was the last time you ever got to do it. You almost never see me show up to lecture without notes. Even if I don't use the notes, I still made the notes. The reason this computer is sitting here, which is not even my computer, is because I have my notes here. And the truth is, in my honest opinion, I've only met in real life like maybe two people who can speak at the level I can speak extemporaneously. But even still, I always keep notes because I prepared. And I also want to make sure that if I were to falter, I can still deliver for you because you deserve it because I value your time and I value my own reputation. And I want to do it like I'm doing it for TV. You dig? You should always do it like you're doing it for TV, which is to say that if you were to encounter your enemy or one of your haters, they should be like, damn, he looking good. You heard me? And that's why the haters entertain me because, 
you know, I just chuckle at the fact that, man, I got a suite on the strip right now. It's called a wraparound suite. Imagine how big it is when they call it a wraparound suite. I got two apartments, you dig? And then I got a house that's way too big. And then I got foreign cars in the garage. What can they, how, what can they tell me? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, it just makes me want to laugh at these guys. I'm like, are you guys serious right now? And so anytime you see me, you're probably going to see me wearing something like this, you know, something super player, some velvet or something crazy. And what I'm saying to you is do it like you're doing it for TV, you know? And so when these haters see me, they need to take a picture because you might not never see a real one like this again in your life, boy. Okay, we have Tyler Lewis said, how did you develop your supreme confidence? This is a good segue from what you just talked about. Ain't it? Um, he said, I admire the way you carry yourself. Any tips on personal development? I'm probably older than you. However, I look up to you. Thanks for sharing your knowledge. I think confidence comes from, confidence comes from delivering the goods, number one, especially in adulthood. Number two, if you read my book, The Black Box, you'll hear a little bit about my upbringing. And one of the things that creates that foundational confidence is how your parents or elders or authority figures in your life interacted with you. My grandmother, when I was a boy, told me I was the man. See, so I grew up as a boy being told I'm the man and that I was meant to lead. I was meant to be in a certain position. And so not only did she fill me with that confidence, but also she let me know that you also have to deliver. And so having those two things in parallel gave me a very strong foundation. And it's never too late to become what you're meant to be. Every man is meant to lead and every man should have the honor of being a king in his household. And every man should have principles that he stands for and goals that he's pursuing. And if you're going to do something, do it confidently. Even if you fail, fail confidently. And that's why I say go forward like a fearless lunatic. And just so you know, we wanted to keep this short because you do need to eat soon. Yes. Okay. We have some super chats. We have Jetstone Jeremy. He said, what do you look for when selecting a boxing gym? Regular hours, number one, which sounds strange perhaps to people who have not a lot of experience with boxing gyms, but because boxing gyms are very rare, they're often run by former fighters or trainers and people who are not necessarily great businessmen maybe are just former athletes. So the hours are reflective of their personal whims and their personal availability. So if you can find a proper gym with regular hours, that's a good start. Meaning when you show up, if you show up early or you want to stay late, it'll be open. Number two, if you can find one that either has classes going or a trainer who's low cost or someone who's willing to give you some tips, that's good. And then number three, I would avoid getting in that ring prematurely. So my personal opinion, you should train hard for six months before you do any sparring, like real sparring with people throwing significant punching power at you because you can get killed in that ring. It's not a game. Okay, we have Aaron Joseph said, peace to the saints. What do you think are the benefits of journaling? Number one, clear thought. Number two, being able to come back to goals. Number three, being able to troubleshoot independently without having to appeal to others and share your shortcomings and your problems. And that's why I highly recommend you get the jab journal, which you can get at thesassin.com, T-H-E-S-A-S-N.com. I'm actually working, uh, waiting for mine right now, which I'm very excited. Not only is it a place to write your thoughts, but it also has so many aphorisms and quotes to drive you. And it also has the structure to make sure that you consider the critical areas of goal setting, financial, relational, meaning relationships, romantic, familial, professional, and health physical fitness goals, things like this. Okay. We have James sent tuition via cash app. Glazer writes that the mic is picking up an excessive amount of S's. I agree. We'll have to figure that out. Okay. We have little cash kids said what Quetz just said was truly incredible. Think of only your next step instead of the whole grand plan, then watch it all come together. Indeed. Church. Okay. We have Ramsey said, he said, twenty dollars is it a missed tuition? So happy to see the podcast growing. It's beautiful to see women come back to ask questions and soak up the ism. Peace to the saints. Also, is a Saint City podcast black jacket for sale? Black jacket. Does he mean your Saint in the Center black jacket? Yeah, I think he might mean the black denim uh, jacket, the Saint in the Center one, which you can get at 
S A S N brand.com. And that thing is cold. Um, I, I was at the eye doctor actually and the optometrist had asked me uh, where I got that from. So yeah, that one is cold. <laughs> it's cold. You know I, mean? I mean, it's, it's, it's that Fonzarelli. It's that tough guy. It's that, that rugged denim. It's that pop collar. It's the red stitching. It's just so gangster. It, it's a sexy gangster. You feel me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We have Malik Love. This is his third super chat. He said, could I scale a bodyguard business and leverage my size and mixed martial arts and military skills to make a service-based business? I only ask because I live in an inner city of Ohio. So drugs, gangs, and violence are common. Yes. I think you could absolutely scale that business and you could eventually remove yourself from it. You know, if you can collect enough guys of significant size in that locality and get connected to the people who actually need bodyguards or the people who want to have them, even though they don't need them. You know, some people like to have them just for show because it makes them look more important or they can get favor or intimidate. And those are the kind of people I would think about. So I would target social media influencers who have significant following some money might not quite be celebrities. I would target high level businessmen. I would tar target high rollers at your local casino. These guys who are, are cash liquid, they're going in and out of the place with a lot of money. Um, so those are the kind of people you would talk to. And I, I think it's a great opportunity. And I know here in Vegas, it's an underserved market because there were two instances in which I needed a bodyguard and you just couldn't get them. And one time they tried to offer me a bodyguard. I think it was like six, three. Yeah. And I was just like, hold on, bro. Like, I don't want a bodyguard I can beat up. You heard me? I want a bodyguard that looks intimidating. He damn near the same size. Yeah. So the person that asked about journaling, uh, the jab journal is here. We just need to go check the oh, mail. The, the jab journal is here. At our mailbox here. Oh, yeah. Wow. Do you know which mailbox we are? Because I was looking at it. The numbers don't correlate. I just have to DM that. You know, pop it in there. Okay. Figure it out. Okay. We have Rienzi sent another super chat. He said, also shout out to the saints who work with you to get products on your site. You truly help young men become financially free. I thank you for it. I really appreciate you acknowledging that Rienzi because I just don't comprehend. Well, I guess I do comprehend it. Someone has to be truly wicked to go in my chat or on my comments and speak a bad word about me. I even heard a white girl, Bridget, a, a blonde white girl said I was a, a, a racist against black people, said I hated Black Lives Matter. <laughs> Kid you not. But you have to be a wicked person to see someone like me who's sending money out to young men and women, helping them grow their wealth and hate on that. And this takes our time. Like I'm spending my time right. for something we're not making money on. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we need to figure out how to minimize that and still be able to show love. So a lot of things have to change because in, indeed we, we have a small team. Okay. We have Kevin K sent $20. This is his second super chat. I believe he said as a man who was raised by women, your content has taught me how I should conduct myself as a man for that. I thank you. Peace to the saints. Thank you. I truly appreciate that compliment. And you know, just like Mr. Rogers would say to the children, Sometimes we think that we can't be this or that because we grew up in fill in the blank situation. But he said something that's true. If you're a boy, you're pretty much going to grow up into a man. If you're a girl, you're pretty much going to grow up into a woman. You know, if nothing tampers with you. And so you were already on the right path. And I'm happy that I can make the path a little more easy and give you a little more certainty as you progress. But you're growing just right. Okay, we have drug hours sent $20. Peace to the saints. We have Justin came back with another super chat. He said, Marquette, how do you create the creed of the assassin? Is, it is a great creed to thrive by. Thank you. That one was given to me by who knows what spiritual force, but there are two things that were given to me. One, the three sentence Bible. And I remember going to bed saying to myself, I really want something that's so simple. It can easily be translated into any language and something that's so simple. It's a Bible people actually read. It's a Quran people actually read. It's a Torah people actually read and can remember. And it, and it basically captures a lot of human experience. And I went to sleep and I woke up and I knew the three sentences and they were perfect. Be yourself. Be good to yourself be good to good people. The linguistic structure was just so 
clear and clean and easy to remember. And it was in perfect order. That was a blessing. You said it was given to me. I understand what you meant, but like no one wrote that oh, for yeah. you. No, it came to you. Yeah, it came to me. Yes, yeah. that's what I mean. It came to me. It came to me. It's a spiritual process. Yes. Okay, we have Robert. He said, your words on living without fear changed my life. Please um, continue to live without fear and remind others. That'll be a great light to them. Continue to remind yourself because it'll try to creep back in. Okay, we have Dominic Patel. He said, after already being in a relationship, I found out my girl used to be a fairly easy to sleep with. It makes me feel resent and distant. Recommendations. So is your understanding that he's currently in the relationship and he finds out back in the day she was on that pogo stick? Yeah. I get like that. Well, number one, you know, she can't erase or change the past. And no man likes a girl that's been passed around. I'm not going to lie to you. I think we would all feel the same way that you feel. But if the idea is that presently she is not being unfaithful and she's not misrepresenting you, you have to make the decision of, can I accept her for who she is today? If she's adding value because she cannot undo the past. Am I willing to deal with the implications and the reputation that she has? And if you're not, be swift in scooting her along. But I would encourage you not to worry too much about that because what you're really worrying about is what other people think and what other people say. That's what you're really worried about. Now, if she is someone different today than she was in the past, that's a beautiful thing. It's unlikely. But if she is, that's a beautiful thing. And I would say carry on. Okay, we have Edmola said, hi, I'm a 17-year-old Nigerian studying engineering in the UK. I'm very insecure about my accent and I'm struggling with time management. Any advice? The accent is what it is. And you are what you are. You are Nigerian. That is a fact. And when people hear your accent, it makes sense. You're a Nigerian with a Nigerian accent. It's not like you're a Chinese guy with a Jamaican accent. So I would encourage you to lean into it and to have fun with it. And, you know, might even be funny if you're talking to a young lady and she says, oh, I can't understand. Or, and you tell her, oh, I can't understand you. Your accent is very thick. You know, flip the script on people, have fun and enjoy it. But that's fine. People should have culture. The second piece is about time management. Stop masturbating, stop playing video games and stop consuming intoxicants. Identify a goal um, in your jab journal or wherever you write down your goals and write down the steps and then hyper-focus on the next step and things that are unrelated. Don't do them. If you really care about your goals and you have some urgency, you'll, you'll get to it. The time will get managed. And you have to be able to play psychological games with yourself to drive forward your performance. You have to really want something. Otherwise, your time will be undervalued by you and by others. Okay, we have a plus MVP. He's the one that had the baller alert. This is his third time sending a super chat today. He said, I'd like to do some online reputation management for myself as I've been on the news due to my past life. I'd rather not change my legal name, but will if I have to. What are my options? This is a very meaningful question. You certainly should do some online reputation management, as you call it, especially if it will impact your financial opportunities. But do be aware that no matter how squeaky clean you are, people will jump out of the shadows to throw dirt on your name. It is just the nature of life today. So if you do have some past legal issues, which are harder to overlook, I'm not going to name the type of legal issues that are hard for people to overlook. I think you can imagine. I think it would be worth um, making some changes. There are firms that specialize in this, so you might consider contacting one. But as far as if it's news articles and things like that, you can actually get those things taken down. And so if there's just like maybe two or three news articles, I would start being strategic and reaching out to those outlets to see how we could get those pieces of information taken down. Okay, we have Fear the Chad said, first time paying tuition. I appreciate all that you provide for a saint. Your lectures always leave me feeling inspired to improve myself. Thank you. I'm very happy to hear that. And I appreciate you trying out something new because it's one of the most difficult things for human beings to do something new. 
We have Ezekiel said, how important is it for men to practice no fat? I don't think it's like uh, hu as huge as some people make it. I think that if we're being honest, some of the people who make videos about it and are really into it, I think those are people who have had problems with pornography addiction and masturbation addiction. I think that's why they're just so deep into it. And those are people who have a lot of spare time. Now, there have been periods in life in which you know, I didn't even have time to do that. I didn't even have time to consume pornographic material. So I don't think it's going to hold you back. I will say that undoubtedly when you lose semen, whether it's due to masturbation or intercourse, you're just a, a bit less sharp, a bit less forceful, a bit less ambition. The spirit isn't there. And I think other people can feel and perceive it, but nothing will outdo consistent work and discipline. So I will tell you that I don't think it's a good thing for a man to have intercourse every single day, my personal opinion. I think it draws out your energy. So wait on your time. So I think you should manage it just like you should manage all other things. Okay, we have Samuel said, peace to the saints. I'm a bespoke tailoring student at the London College of Fashion. I'm constantly around Skittle eaters. How can I create a network with those kind of persons without selling out or compromising? Ah, <sighs> Saint, I know what you're talking about. It, it saddens me that there's some industries where these Skittle guzzlers are in abundance and you can't help but be around them and do business with them. You know, some of them are fairly entertaining and talented. The fact is, this is your industry, and you have to do business. You know, doing business with someone doesn't mean that you are friends. And so I encourage you to do business and try to thrive as much as you can. And it's not selling out to do business with someone. You know, There will be limits that you'll come to, and I trust that your moral compass will be able to guide you through that. But I want to encourage you to go and make a buck and enjoy yourself in this industry and be a good example for us, because if you leave the industry, then it will be left to them. And we, we need some saints in that industry. And let us know when you're finished with school, eh? because we'll come get a suit made. There you go. And okay. congratulations. That's a fine fashion college. We have Drug Hour sent another super chat. He said, peace to the saints. Marquette, when you talk about the guy, Nick the Hustler, I felt that story. It taught me to never stop hustling and go for it all and never settle and always surround myself around hustlers. True indeed. You know, I... I think about that damn near every day, and I'm so blessed that I had good OGs who were real practitioners to teach me game. You know, Nick the Hustler was a real hustler. Kevin Cox, he was a real super player. And so, you know, I learned the game from a pure source, not from a, a book or a movie, but from the real doers. Okay, we have Charles Noon sent a super chat. We have a plus MVPs back again after, I don't even know how many this is. He said, drug and gun charges, nothing too immoral. Thanks, Marquette. Yeah, me personally, um, gun charges don't bother me if I was hiring. And then drug charges, if you were distributing, don't bother me. If you were consuming, I'd probably be a little bit uh, less pleased about that. If you beat the case, theoretically, no one should care. I think that's a lie, though. I think just being accused in the west people are going to be suspicious of you because that's our, our sick culture even after you do your time it's like they still want you doing time they feel like you have a moral debt but i think if you're applying to work with rational rational reasonable men i think they won't be too worried i i would i'd hire someone who beat the case and i would hire someone who had gun charges and drug distribution charges Oh, we actually have one more. Um, a plus MVP said I beat the case, by the way, or beat the charges, by the way. Mm -hmm. And then Charles Moon said, my ex trying to get back with me, man. And then he sent another one saying, she also just tweeted, you lucky I like secrets, sir. Laugh out loud. Peace to the saints. You know, I think it's generally a bad idea to go backward in life. You might beat her down, you know, a few more times if she's not too dangerous, but sometimes chicks are. You know, sometimes these chicks are very dangerous. So if you were doing the saintly thing, you'd probably just move on and ignore her. Someone just asked what your Instagram is, and I think we should also share the Saint City Podcast Instagram. Absolutely, and I think, um, I wish they were both in the description. I don't think they are. So do you know both of them? You can type those in. Yeah. 
Fantastic. Uh, go ahead and send in your last questions via Cash App, and we will wind down because I did not have a chance to have a meal after my exercise. And I appreciate you all joining and fellowshipping with me. All right, saints, let us end this the way we always end this, with our tradition, the creed of the assassin. Repeat after me with full conviction, knowing this is true of you, the creed of the assassin. I am going to be who I truly am because I am remarkable. I'm going to strive every moment to show the greatest part of who I am. Until next time, peace to the saints.